Something that no one tells you when you start your PhD is that at the end of your PhD program, so three to four years later, you are going to have to give and hand over all of your reagents, all of your methods, all of your results, your lab book, show where everything is to someone, and that can take a lot of time, especially towards the end where you're writing your thesis, you're getting ready for your viva, that is the most possible, that's one of the most frustrating things that you can possibly do, especially if you haven't considered it during the time, the past three years, you now have to sort out a whole organization system um, and think about how you're going to pass over your notes and your information to somebody else. So in this video, I'm gonna be telling you nine ways that I kept on top of my lab book and my experiments and my notes and my organization in order to ensure that actually at the end, when I was required to give back my lab book and my notes to my supervisor, it really didn't take me more than sort of half a day of just getting things together and organizing and just making sure everything is clear and neat, as opposed to having to try to get a whole filing system from scratch uh, three years down the line. So the most important thing overall is mindset. Your mindset needs to be, can these experiments be replicated by somebody else? And if they can be replicated by somebody else, are the reagents and are all of the equipment and everything, the methods, is it clear for somebody else to be able to read and copy? Can someone else locate all of my reagents? Can somebody else find where everything is? Um, and can somebody else understand what I have written? That is the most important thing. So the moment you step into the lab from day one, regardless of whether your experiment is sort of wet lab, quantitative, qualitative, does like you need to make sure that you are recording everything that you do in a way that's organized and in a way that if somebody else takes it over, it makes sense. Keep that in mind from the start. The first thing I did was to have a table of contents within my lab book. So this can be as simple as just saying, at the back, I've got all the reagents and its locations. At the front, I've got um, each day and each thing that I've done and it's listed and it's dated. So you are aware of like how to go, like how far back you did these experiments and the dates that you did them. So dates every single day. Um, maybe having a contents page for things like your appendix. So any extra work that you've maybe made but you don't necessarily want to add it into your main lab book but you do want to record it somewhere having like an appendix so this table of contents works just like it would do for a report or a thesis it just locates the reader to where they need to go secondly be consistent with your formatting in your lab book so as soon as you start and you get this brand new fresh lab book just think have a, have a moment to think about how you want to record um, things every single day. So key things are have the date at the top of every single page um, at the start of every single day, you have your dates written down. And then maybe if you have a new methods that you're trying out, maybe box them in a specific color or write them in a specific pen color. So it means that whenever you're flicking through your thesis, you know that red pen is a method, right? It just makes it so much easier when you're coming back to look at it. I also did things like at the back, I would put, I have a list of where all of my um, reagents are within the liquid nitrogen tank that I had. So that would always be at the back. So I would never just write that within the text in the main body of the lab book. I'd always write that at the back of the lab book. So just being really consistent and sticking to that throughout your PhD. The third thing is recording your experiments in detail, in, in as much detail as possible. So really adding anything that you've added, any temperature changes that you might have made, any deviations from an experiment that you're copying. So let's say you're looking at a method from a different paper. If you've slightly changed something, then write that down. So you can say, look, I've used this experiment, I've used this these methods from this particular paper, but I have changed this thing. So any small information, any detail that might seem like it's too small, it really isn't. Include everything. And even if you iterate it later, you can say, right, I have iterated the methods from this day and I'm now doing it slightly differently and these are the results from it. Because when you come back to look at it and you come back to replicate that experiment, it needs to be clear which one the results have actually come from. The fourth thing is to use really clear and concise language. Avoid using jargon. So when I say jargon, I mean, you obviously are going to have your sort of abbreviations and words that you use that nobody else probably knows. But at least somewhere, maybe in the front, you can say something like, if I write TB, this is what it stands for. If I write AB, this is what it stands for. If I write these numbers, this is what it stands for. So it's really clear when somebody else wants to go and flick back and look at your thesis, they know that you're referring, TB actually refers to this thing and not what they think it refers to. Fifth thing that I did was to illustrate my results. And this is really, really helpful. So, you know, when you've got your, you've 
got on your new results, you're seeing an image. So one of the things that I had was I had bleb, so I had like a cell, it was a circle, and then it had like these kind of bubbles, like a flower coming off of it. So one thing that I would do is, even though of course I have the images um, on the computer, the computerized images that were taken from the microscope, I do have those, but I've got hundreds and thousands of those. So in my actual lab book, when I was writing it down, um, I would say, oh, this knockout of this particular protein made really large blebs, and I'll just draw a quick, like, quick sketch of really big ones rather than small ones, just to kind of have that visual imagery where what I'm saying and what I'm seeing is matching up to what I actually want to under how I actually want to understand it. So just visually representing things as much as possible um, to show and remind yourself of what things look like. The sixth thing is keep your lab book up to date as much as possible. And by up to date, I mean daily. So you shouldn't be going weeks without updating your lab book because you can imagine how many things, how many experiments, how many methods, how many you know different parts of your PhD you're going to be going through in those few weeks. So the way that I typically do it is I'd have sort of a little, a little kind of notebook that I can put into my pocket or my lab, my lab pocket for the most part. So, you know, no, no bigger than a, I don't know what size is it, probably like A6 or something, really small. Um, and then that would be my daily book that I'd kind of walk around with. I'd scribble into there, write down the notes, any meeting notes, whatever, I'd write it down into there. And then I'd, on a daily basis, so usually I'll do it before I leave the lab, but um, sometimes if I got lazy, I would always do it in the morning, at least the morning after, so my mind is fresh and I, you know, I have a, I have a good recollection of what I did the night before. Um, so updating it every single day. It, I mean, especially my kind of research. I was doing cancer research. Things are changing every day. I'm noticing new things every single day in my experiments. I won't remember what I did on Monday from Friday. Like I just won't remember it. Um, and that's not a good sign. So be sure to record any changes and any experiments as soon as possible. The next one, and this is one that I shouldn't have to say, is to back up your data regularly and back up your results regularly. So if you're someone that gets results written on paper, scan them in and put them on a hard drive, put them on a on Google Drive, somewhere that you can definitely get back and you know access them if you lose the handwritten version. If you get results from like a microscope, for example, make sure that those digital files are saved on at least one or two places. So for me, I would have them saved on my hard drive, my external hard drive, and then I would save that every so often, maybe every month or so, I'd back that up onto a, a drive. So like Dropbox, for example, I can lose a hard drive right, you can't lose Dropbox. Um, and also the local drives, so the drives that are on the university computers, they get deleted and wiped every 30 days, I think it was. So they can't store everyone's experiments forever. So it's up to you to make sure you're saving your data, taking it somewhere else and actually keeping them safe. Um, that data is, is actually quite sensitive because it hasn't been published yet. Um, and it's obviously new information, so you don't want it to get into the wrong hands. Sounding really dramatic, but it, you know, it does happen where you've got your experiments and you lose them, someone else gets hold of them, and they could technically publish your data. So that is a key thing to think about. The eighth thing is to have an index at the back of your lab book. So what I did was I printed out a template where I said like the name of what it is that I had, the reagent for example, where it came from, so the manufacturer, the concentration that I used and where and where it was stored. I had things in fridge, in a fridge, fridges, multiple fridges actually. I had things in freezers and I had things in the liquid nitrogen tank and I had things in a, a ton of other places as well. So making sure that like I know and someone else knows where, where everything is. So I'll say something like, you know, the liquid nitrogen tank, it had sort of like eight um, cylindrical compartments. So I'll say, right, it's in A, and then there'd be a number, and then I'll say, right, A5, so it's A5, and then within A5, it has like, you know, a few different levels. So I'd have like a diagram showing, in this corner, there's this thing, in that corner, it's that thing, in this corner, it's that thing. And I'd even say how many times it's been thawed, um, because that's really important for quality control, how many times, like what concentration it's at, the date that I did it on, um, and these things have really helped me as well because it means that when I'm going back to repeat an experiment, I can say, these are the cells that I used, right? This is the reagent that I used. And that helps so much even yourself throughout your PhD, but also when you finish your PhD and you need to hand over these reagents and all of this stuff to somebody else, uh, it just means that it's all done. Like you don't actually have to go back and create this new system. 
And last but definitely not least, keep your lab book in one location. And this is one I promise you, you'll be so grateful for complying with. Keep your book in one place. So don't take your lab book to the next door building to do some microscope work and then take your lab book to a meeting in Germany and then take your lab book here and there. Don't do that. You will 100% lose it and that's all your work gone. Like, you know, you've lost everything. You've lost all the methods, all the materials that you've used. You will have to start all over again. So just make sure that you're leaving your lab book in the lab. Anywhere else you take something else with you so what i would do as i mentioned earlier i had my little notebook that went in my pocket i'll take that around with me to other other labs to meetings to uh, you know board for conferences and then whatever i wanted to write down into my lab book i would transfer that into my lab book later i would even use voice recording so you know if it was something that i actually wanted to kind of make more notes i would just record the voice of whoever it was speaking or myself and then listen to it again later and take notes from that later all that to make sure that my lab book doesn't get lost because it has to stay in one place. I can promise you I've seen it happen and it's always because people are taking it from one place to the other and then you lose like you lose trail of where you've even been during the day because of how many places in your university you probably go to as part of your experiments. So make sure you're keeping it in one place. Um, I hope this video helped and I hope it gave you something to think about and I think this is really important for a first year if you're just about to start your PhD or you've just recently started your PhD or even if you're like one year in, if you haven't thought about organization, indexing, structure and how you actually like containing this information, at the end of your PhD it really becomes so difficult and almost impossible I would say to get everything together. So your supervisor will absolutely love you if you're able to do this. Mine was so appreciative that I could just hand over all these notes, all these indexing, all this organization to him without having to actually faff around and try to figure out at the end. And if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more from me on this channel and i'll see you guys in my next video bye